her. She was acting weird. She wouldn't eat. She just seemed like out of it as much as a two-week, six-day-old baby could be out of it. By that evening, we were actually in the pediatric intensive care unit at the Children's Hospital here, and we were told that her heart was failing and that they needed to put her on a heart-lung bypass machine. They told us um, after we'd been there for a couple days that she would require a heart transplant. I want to talk to you, uh, you know, and I, I touched upon it, but, and if you're not comfortable talking about it, that's fine. Um, but I think your situation is a little bit uh, different and people can kind of, maybe people out there, because I think the voices now for the, the anti-mask, the anti-vaccine, uh, things like that, they're, the voices, there's less, but they're loud. They're very yes, loud uh, yes. and they're very intense. I'd like you to give your reasons why you think wearing, uh, you know, in terms of your situation, why you think wearing a mask and being vaccinated is, is, is important. And uh, you're in fact keeping your kids out of school uh, a little bit as well and why that's important to you as well. Because I want people out there to feel it's okay. You do what you think is the safest uh, mm -hmm. for your family. So totally true. So thankfully we sent the girls back to school this week. The infections are sort of, the cases are starting to level off here, thankfully, but we did keep them out of school for what was it? One, two, well, they closed the schools for an extra week, but they were out of school for, for three weeks. Um, and that's the first time we've actually kept them out of school when school was open during this entire pandemic. But, you know, like you said, there's only so much that you can't make people do things they don't want to do. And it is getting to that point where I feel like everyone's, it's time for you to fend for yourself now. And, you know, I hear and read comments, which really are quite disturbing um, where it's like, well, if it's only immune compromised people who are dying and in the hospital, well, they should just stay home. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like this, this, this sort of mentality of, well, like they can just suffer. Like the rest of us need to get on with our lives. And I totally get that. Cause let me tell you, of course, I'd love to have my parents over and it's Chinese new year this week. I'd love to have my whole family. Like we normally have like 18 of us in the house making jiaozi dumplings. Like there are things that we're all missing out on, but for me, you know, and I get that everyone has their own opinions and their own choice and their own beliefs, but, you know, so many of the arguments that I read about not wanting to mask or, or get vaccinated, just when I look at them, I'm just like, wow, have you even thought about what you put in your body today? And, you know, have you taken a Tylenol or an Advil or an aspirin over the last month or two? You know, have you eaten hot dogs? You know, like, let's face it, do you really yeah. know what you're doing to your body? And I think people are just, unless they've been in a situation where they have someone in their lives who is vulnerable and who could get really sick and die or be hospitalized because of COVID, then I think it's easy to just be like, well, you know, they can just all fend for themselves. I would love if everyone would just be respectful of others. And, and, you know, the whole masking thing is interesting because when I see people not wearing a mask, there's one kid in my, um, in Addison's class who refuses to wear a mask. And I see her mom on the playground and she doesn't wear a mask. So clearly this is a family thing, yeah. no masking. And to me, what that says is I'm teaching my child not to care about the other people in her classroom, not to care about her teacher not to care about the other, like the music teacher they interact with or the librarian, like that just shouts out, I disrespect all of you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that for me, sure, especially at the beginning when we weren't really sure if masks really worked and, you know, we had those like crappy, like, you know, cloth masks we were buying like from wherever, then I get that, that maybe the science is like, it only reduces things by whatever, 20%, 10%. But to me, I always wore a mask when I went in somewhere obviously because of my experience with Addison and, and being immune compromised, but because it's disrespectful not to for the people yeah. that work there and for the other people in the store or the business or whatever you're doing. So I think of it like, even if you don't believe the science, why can't you do it just to be 
like just to be respectful of other people. Yeah, and I, I have this big thing about compassion. Uh, now, why can't you just be, let's, let's show some compassion uh, totally. for other people. Like you may not believe in it, but if, 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 if by wearing a mask, let's just say it, you're, you're right. 80%, you might be right that this doesn't, nothing happens, but what if that 20% and exactly. you walk by somebody or you do this, you cough on them or you breathe on them and they get sick and something terrible happens to them. Are, are you fine with that? Like, but it's one of those, you can't see it. So people, exactly. uh, people yeah. it doesn't exist. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, and I think with the vaccines, it's like, it's clear millions and millions of people have been vaccinated now. And, yeah. and the, the, the side effects are so, you know, they're so they're, they're not net, they're not zero. I mean, I'm never going to say it's 100% safe, but there are a lot of things we do in our lives every day that have way more risk. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, again, you see those stories of people who refuse to get vaccinated, then they're sick and dying in the hospital. And they're like, give me the drugs, yeah. give me the drugs. And it's like, you, Oh, you want the Pfizer? Cause of course, Pfizer's made a new, a new yeah. drug that supposedly works really well. It's like, I don't want any Pfizer in my body. So I'm sorry you were willing to get to the point where you would actually get infected um, with who knows what kind of long-term side effects, potentially infecting other people. But yet the, the first moment that you need the treatment of which like this many people have taken the treatment, this many people have been vaccinated. Yeah. You're going to take your chances on the treatment. Like, yeah. well, and a lot like, of those treatments are made from the same companies that actually made the vaccines. Exactly. It's a strange, uh, I, I don't really understand it. Now, all I can do is move forward with compassion for other people and totally. let our voices and our approach to things, um, hopefully that set an example and people can make a change from there because that's all we can do. Cause I've tried for sure having discourse with people through Facebook or like, in th and people don't change their opinions, at least, no, at least on social don't. media. So it's, it's a lot, it's a losing battle. You know, you can, uh, I could fall into the same category as them and just point fingers and say, it's us against them, get into my tribe. But I'm a centrist kind of, I, I don't have, like, I, I listen to everybody. I, uh, I, I feel for everybody, you know, like, I don't want to, uh, I don't want anybody to come to harm. So, yeah. No, for sure. And, and, you know, really it goes back to the realization that you can only control yourself and your actions. And so, you know, it's, it's, we've lived with this for, well, since Addison had her transplant, since the day of her transplant, she's been on immune suppressing drugs. So this has been something that we have dealt with um, for almost 11 years. And maybe that makes it easier for us to live with because we have lived with, with it for so long. But, you know, we always have to make choices and we've had to make choices since day one uh, over what we think is safe and what we don't think is safe and things that we we are OK doing, things that we're not OK doing. You know, I've had a bottle of hand sanitizer at my door since then. So, you know, it's the reality for many, many people. And I just think if we can all just stick to being nice to each other, like just like that's the only way we're going to get through it. And if people in our world aren't going to be part of the solution, then, you know, sometimes it does mean a choice. Like, yeah. do you, can you be friends with that person if their beliefs on, on vaccination or masking are so different than yours? Thankfully, we haven't had that in our immediate circle of family and friends, but, you know, I, I don't think I could be really good friends and really close to somebody who didn't believe in vaccines and the fundamental respects of wearing a mask and respecting public health, because I could just never look at them the same. Yeah, it's, I, it's I would very lose respect difficult. for them. I have yeah. a couple of friends who, uh, and one friend uh, I'm quite close to back in Canada. And this person is kind of put post stuff like kind of saying, oh, they're like, now they're doing the, everyone's doing the passive memes type of thing where it has, yes. they don't actually write it. They'll, he'll write, right. this is interesting. And then right. write that. So it's kind something. of a passive aggressive way of sharing it, like a link to something or just a meme with some information on it. And, uh, and it's, and I usually I, I like to look through, especially his, I like to look through it and try to find out the source right. and where it comes right. from. And I'm like, oh, actually, this isn't wrong. But even him, he doesn't, he thinks, he goes, oh, I know people, you know, I know, you know, my background, I know people and stuff like that. And I'm just <gasps> like, I don't think those are the right people to know, but, but I'm, I listen, I listen and I'm, I'm still his, his friend. I think he's a wonderful person and we grew up together. So so I listen to what he has to say and I take, but would you have him over for dinner at your house if he was unvaccinated in the middle well, of the And, that, and that's the thing is in it during this, this 
the whole time at Omicron, the way it spreads with my daughter not being able to get vaccinated. Exactly. Uh, I'm very, we're very choosy on what we do. Like we, we have to stop our, we used to go for daddy daughter dates on Sundays and stop. Right. Uh, we had to stop our kind of Sunday shops uh, because uh, you know, she, she's happy wearing a mask, which is great, but still there's a potential there that something can happen. So um, that's a real sad thing for me, knowing you see all these people around the shopping center when masks are mandated indoors here. And then all these people walking around, like, just like, they just seem like, like whatever. I keep looking to think in the, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, <laughs> I'm getting away with this, but I just don't think they care. Like, I just don't think oh. they're just like, no, nope, my choice, no big deal. Like, and no one's there to really go stop and what are these poor mall shopping exactly. center people supposed to do you know like You're making 12 bucks an hour yeah right? get out like, get out and risk violence or risk somebody screaming at them and belittling which has them. happened yeah. right which has happened we've seen yeah. that yeah so all i think all elaine and i are doing is asking you whether whatever your beliefs are is just be nice be compassionate mm-hmm. and think about other people and not just about your current situation think about other people's situations when you're approaching anything in life i think that's a great totally. approach to life yeah. It could be you in five years. It could be your, you know, your mother right yeah. now. Like it, it's just, and you don't, and you also don't know what other people's um, situations are. So be respectful of them. They may yeah. not feel comfortable with you standing right next to them in the yes. checkout line, right? Exactly. <laughs>